Oh, <laughs> it's so bad, dude. You, you look like a. Hi, guys! Like, Welcome to Cloud Out Podcast! <laughs> God, dude. You look like a terrifying example of what you think an angel might appear to you as. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh. No, this is how we all look. <laughs> God damn. Turn the light behind you back on. All right. Hold on. Let's go. We got to get going. Let's do we're, it. we're recording right now. Hold on, hold on. Yeah. It looks off. It looks awesome. Anybody that's listening right now, Rye is trying to figure out the lighting situation. And now his new we're shaved not, head. We're not. God. His, his new shaved head has refracted all the light <laughs> directly on. into your face. You cannot see a thing. <laughs> If you are listening to this and you're not watching it, tune in on Facebook Wednesday, 545, or just, yeah, the hat. He's putting a hat on. Let's see if it helps or not. Well, no, I want the world to see my freshly shorn scrote. Buddy, they will will not miss that. I promise you that. God, You encouraged me so hard to do this. No, you did good. You did good. I think that the podcast listeners will be able to see that. (laughs) That thing is loud. Uh, All right, let's go, Bruce Willis. We are. Is it Bruce Willis? Uh, what is he? Bruce. I'll take Bruce Willis. I'll take that. Yeah, I'm sure you would. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going. We're almost going. How many? Never mind. How many? What? Nothing. Nah, nothing. What number is this? Eight? Nine. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's uh that's Spanish for no, if you're wondering. <laughs> Clapped out. Podcast. This, anyone listening to the podcast that's this the recorded version is probably already tuned out. We have zero content for the first six and a half minutes of this. It's just talking about your gleaming head. Uh, the comments on YouTube say otherwise. Three. Oh two, the YouTube, yeah, one. YouTube. But the people we are live. Now we're live. Okay, good. Clapped Out Podcast, episode nine, nueve, coming at you live. And I apologize for the glare off of my cue ball head. <laughs> it's so bad, dude. It's so bad. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, it's great. Hey, do me a favor. Get a couple ants on the floor and see if the refracted light off your forehead will kill them, burn them alive. <laughs> this is... This is a good look right here. Look at this. You could you could launch your own exterminator service with just your face. Oh, I'm not. Look, I'm trying. Yeah, you put a, right. it's, put a hat on and see what it happens. What it does if it dampens the shine. It totally changes the resolution. Your internet's already choppy. This is gonna go great. No, it's not. Lies. Clapped out podcast episode nine you are live in the studio by studio i mean spare bedroom aka parts storage for me and rise garage the land of cars that will never beat logan (laughs) and probably won't do anything anytime soon or run in the near future so we have a ton to talk about today we have so much information and so many intricate subjects and in-depth topics it's going to seem like we haven't planned at all. And that's not the case. (laughs) That is not the case. We have a a variety of topics to cover. Yes, we put Uh, minutes of effort into this. Oh, man. Rye, he said, Andrew Watkins, turn the brightness down on your head. (laughs) (laughs) It's so fucking shiny. Oh, this is great. All right. So you're live in the... The clap, the clapper zone, the oh, clapperito. If you're into the whole brevity thing, man. Yeah. All so, right. What are we gonna What are we gonna talk about? What's let's, new? Let's start. Let's start with uh, why you cannot download Blink 182's live album, The Mark, Tom, and Travis Show anymore. I don't know can, why you can't get that anymore. Can we back up and talk about why you would want to? Have you ever listened to the live album? No. It was I during the whole. South Park when they did the South Park movie and they had Satan um, yes. in the movie and then and then Tom would talk as Satan into the crowd and I just found it very hilarious and now you can't buy it anywhere I can't find it anywhere was it cancel cultured I think it was cancel cultured Ooh, Brian Willis who's the king of St. Charles Logan or Joey boost 12 uh, well Joe's not from St. Charles he's from some podunk country road in the middle of nowhere and uh, I I was not the king of St. Charles I was 
the scum on the bottom of people's shoes. <laughs> I was the annoying loud kid with the car that was slow and acted like it was fast. That was my role. Um, you can't legally download it, Mike. Okay. So you can get it on torrents or something, I'm sure. Not that I'm directing people to do that. Um, all right. Dustin wants to know what happened to the CRX. I sold it and I bought my uh, girlfriend an engagement ring with the money. Boom. So that's what happened there. Um, no more CRX. I am completely done with Hondas and I will never own another Honda. So long as I live. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, you guys aren't watching this live, there's a little bit of foreshadowing Four, there. I would say foreskin, but foreskinning. Anyway. Yo, do you like Hootie and the Blowfish? Uh, not the Blowfish. I'm a pretty big fan of Hootie himself, though. Remember the episode of Friends where they uh, they had an argument because, like, some of the friends had money and the other friends, like, Joey and then, like, Rachel and Phoebe, like, didn't have a lot of money. But then, like, the other friends, they had the money and then they, they had the money to buy the Hootie and the Blowfish tickets and then they, they went without the other friends. And you're the, you're yeah. still binge-watching Friends, aren't you? HBO Max, dude. I'm plugging that right now. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just excited about Darius Rucker rules. Incoming Kalis. Oh, all right. <laughs> Can you, you just mute him right now? Just mute him. I don't know what they're eating. They're, they're eating pizza, it looks the like. Only person. And Heath. Heath is the only one I care about. Hey, Heath. Yes. <laughs> Who the fuck does a podcast at 545 and not 6 or 7? Hey, who the fuck? Hey, gobble go. I want to eat my pizza roll line live feed. Get up, bo pop, bo pop. You Does see you that car like... back there? That thing hasn't been on the road in like 10 years, and we're in the middle of um, doing the brakes, and it's 545, not 6 um, or 7. Just, like just a heads up there, Josh. No, majority of people can't see the car because they'll be listening to this on their commute to yes, work. Yes, this, this isn't is, about yeah, when we is, record it. It's about – yeah. So, audio um, and are we not on facebook right now no we are but, <laughs> we are. but the majority of people won't be able to understand what you're talking about you see here's the thing we had a group meeting you weren't around you have a face for radio and we had to just go straight to itunes with your bits because people don't like the way you look it's just part of it man i'm very sorry heath looks great though so it's a good thing you got him with you Heath's sexy Fuck, heath. that's a good it's a good looking man there you go there. hey your your quality of your video is better now rye is it's it? not as grainy. I swear to God. So somebody's not playing Xbox One right now. When does my head disappear to my garage door? Right there. You're good. <laughs> you look like the worst angel ever invented. So, I'm gonna show, I gotta, is there anybody on here watching? Yeah, there are. But this isn't about a show me podcast. This is yeah. talk Stop about. Stop showing a car off, dude. We've told oh, you this before. Hey, just mute him. Just mute him. He'll just he'll be fine. He's ridiculous. It, 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 what you guys can't see right now is Heath probably has the sickest third gen with the most retro period correct paint job in the world on it. And I am super jealous of it. That is a sick car. I do like it. I like it way better than Josh's Camaro. It's up there. It's one of my cars, Logan. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah, so, that's Josh, <laughs> this weekend, Josh has an event this weekend that he uh, is going to. It is Shift Sector coming to Marion, Indiana, half mile racing. The last time Josh had his Camaro out half mile racing, he was in the 190s, the low 190s. And uh, this time is going to be a little bit different because he's going to have Steve Morris trackside with him, along with Clark Rosengale. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Griswold. Rosenbagel. Rosenbagel. So Rosen they're Dingle. Clark's got a 2010 Camaro that's got a SMX engine. Steve Morris has a water jacketed billet piece of awesome. What does it make on pump gas? Like 2,000 horsepower? Three. How much? The thing made 3,000 horsepower. Or it was like 2,900 or 2,800 or something. On 93 octane? Yeah. Okay, that's insane. So Steve's going to be out there. Josh will be out there. It's pretty sad when a when a thirteen hundred horsepower fully built Camaro is going to be one of the slowest cars on the property. You know what I mean? <laughs> to the wheels, Logan. It's to the wheels. <laughs> um, Josh, do you have any goals? You have said that you're 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 you don't have a, a hard target, but I mean, there's got to be something you want to. You got to get the two hundred mile an hour monkey off your back, right? My only goal is that nobody gets hurt. That's it. All right. Can we? Talk to 1997 Josh Kalis real quick, and maybe he'll feel differently about it. Maybe he'll just want to put his foot through the firewall, keep the gas pressed. So I eat everybody up, fucking no matter what. I don't even care if, if Clark's turned up to his 4,500 horsepower. I'm going to fucking two honk his ass, and he's going to have to catch my monkey <laughs> ass. 
And then when <laughs> I beat him, he would be like, yo, it changes the race. <laughs> oh, my God. It. Hey, you remember, right. This reminds Wait, me of the, remember Frank on. back <laughs> in the day? Yeah, I'm Frank in the day. <laughs> Real quick, I think we should pull the people. We need to come out with a two honk his ass t-shirt. Ooh. Yeah, that's two honk his ass idea. t-shirt. All right, that's in. I want to hear. I want to see some likes on the post if we need to do a two honk his ass shirt. I'm writing that down. I'm so stoked about that. That sounds like a great <clears throat> idea. Um, so, Marion, Indiana, when are you arriving at Shift Sector, and how many people do you expect to be there, and have you checked the forecast, the weather forecast? Yeah, the weather looks okay. Maybe spotty shower in the morning or something, but um, it looks a lot better than last year. Last year it was like 90-something with a 15-mile-an-hour headwind. This time it looks like only three mile an hour winds. So it should be good. To people that are fairly new to the podcast, uh, if you have not watched before, I will lay down the basics of Josh's setup so you guys can catch up. Uh, so his car is a 69 Camaro steel body, all steel everything. It has got a – what chassis is underneath it, Josh? It's a Camaro. No, what cha- – well, who did the <laughs> – dickhead. I tell you what, let's just listen to you chew for an hour and let's yeah, see. Yeah, that's that'd be much better. You guys are over here eating like you haven't, like it's your first meal and like you just got off of it's got, um, naked it's and hard. afraid. No, I don't care anymore. You've ruined it, Josh. Can you tell me the last time you got a haircut is though? Because you look ridiculous, but It's got a steel chassis. Okay, cool. So he's got a bunch of stuff from people he should be plugging right now because they worked with him as partners, but he doesn't want to for whatever reason. So the car is a 1300 horsepower <laughs> T56 uh, he will not be driving it. Heath will be driving it because Heath has testicles. Um, and the car... His kids are grown. My kids are grown. Hmm. So yeah. his life matters less. I get it. Okay, perfect. Less responsibilities. Cool, 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 cool. No doubt, no doubt. The, the car's gone 192, is that correct? In a half mile? Yep. Okay. So Josh claims he's got a 200-mile-an-hour car all the time. And then every time I call him out on it, he's like, not in the half, in the four miles it'll go 200. Will it go 200 in the half mile this weekend? I don't know. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I don't know. It's got different gears in it, so that'll be weird. Um, I don't know, dude. I really don't know. I am excited to see that thing rip. It's going to be – it'll be nice to see. And to have the pit crew you have there is going to be very helpful. We're not even bringing a jack, dude. If, if something fucks up with it, we're just – like, I'm bringing some extra coils that I brought from Dynasty. Hey, did you get a, the box? Did you open it yet? Yeah, and I was going to ask you. I mean, it, it's like 10 pounds of paper in there, and <laughs> I wasn't going to dig through them. I don't know if there's something else in there. I just tossed it. No, well, I had to empty the paper shredder in my office, and I had this big-ass box. So I <laughs> filled it to the top with paper shreds and then boxed his coils individually in separate boxes. Hey, um, Logan, whatever yeah, happened to I, Did I pay for that extra fucking shipping? Sorry. Because yeah. it was a lot more weight and a lot bigger box than normal, and I have a feeling I had to pay for that. Yeah, I don't. I don't probably. I didn't really pay attention. It was like four thousand dollars, but I didn't really count. Mm-hmm. What's up, Ryan? Oh, you, you had something, Ryan? Yeah. Hey, what did you ever? What happened to those valve stems? That those caps that I I sent you? They are in my drawer at work. <laughs> I do the the structural integrity of those valve stems is questionable. They're not threaded like they, the thread just looks like a press on deal. So Rye sent me a bunch of plastic penis shaped valve stem caps for my yeah. tires. I like to get on Amazon and shop and just send Logan random things from time to time. I have a bunch. I have the Tommy Boy uh, gift set in here too. But the penis valve stem caps, I'd love to rock them. But I feel like they're going to come off and just sling through someone's car. Like they're very, they don't fit well. <laughs> I'll just have to JB weld them to the hood of the car or something. Uh, call insurance, like a, a dick hit my car. Yeah, big Wait, dick. Sorry, what? It is yeah. what it is, man. Um, cool. So we got half mile this weekend. Rye, what are you getting into this weekend? You racing? No. Uh, nope. My transmission, actually. So my transmission will be coming back here very shortly. Apparently, um, there's a lot of damage done inside of that thing. More than, yeah. Uh, rather not get into it. Apparently, got semi-toasty inside of it uh mm-hmm. but jeff dobbins down in wilmington north carolina is taking care of all that shout out to him and of course my homie scott always drag helping week. out with this scott from drag week always helping out with it um he's reprimanded me on my behavior behind the wheel and told me that i'm doing it wrong and we're going to fix that uh, basically everything got nice and warm but the car is sitting here literally just waiting for the transmission uh i'm actually since everything 
all over the place is getting canceled left and right. Uh, Dig or Die No Prep is going on on the 28th, I think it is, of August. And it's going to be at Rockingham. And I'm thinking about throwing my hat in the ring and going out and trying to go a few rounds in some small tire no prep. Right now, if they have 120 cars in small tire, which is ridiculous. But it's a $40,000 purse. But, When's the last time you raced no prep? Um, yeah, never. What was, I, the, what was the name of that race? The COVID race? Dig or die, no oh. prep. <laughs> we <COVID> had uh, – <laughs> I posted up online on my personal Facebook about how I think it's funny when people hold the quarter panels of cars <laughs> in the burnout box. Yes. And I got just – people started getting so pissed. Like, you must not – I don't know why I give it a country accent. I just assume everyone from the South hates me. Pretty true. You must not race on the street, you piece of shit. And uh, so I changed it to in the water box. Yeah. So let's talk about this. Holding a quarter panel of a car, and this is related to no prep because the no prep stuff I can understand. You keep the car going straight. Okay, cool. On yeah. the street, Crown Street, which I was, I was made privy to. But a water box at the drag strip holding the quarter panel while you're doing a burnout, yes or no, what do you think, Rye? um well you know this is air ride the fence either don't ride the fence i'm not i'm not so i personally have never had anybody hold the quarter panel on my car i've never held the quarter panel on anybody's car um i've had a couple times where the car gets a little bit sporty but like once there's water on the tires and the tires are going like just burn it who cares and once you let off the tran or the the line lock it usually will straighten itself out NHRA Pro Stock, actually, in, I think it was 2019, when they switched to EFI and a flat hood and all that stuff, that was one of the rules they also implemented was crew members can no longer hold onto the car when it does a burnout because they wanted that like drift style coming big, gnarly, smoky burnouts uh, coming out of the water box. Um, so at the pro level uh, at Pro Stock, they were doing it for a while. I... I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. I really don't. No, I don't want anybody can't. touching my car. I, don't touch my car. I don't need it. I don't. Yes. I don't care. Cool. I mean, people do it so it doesn't kick the shit out of knock knock over the the people standing next to the car, right? They shouldn't be standing next to the car. I, mean, I would push back on. Race or a grudge race. I mean, it's everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it's part of the culture. People are going to crowd the the line it's, and everything. It's like almost that. like Josh didn't listen to the beginning of this conversation where I said specifically, you know, in the water box of the drag strip, but it's okay. Yeah, but our streets got water boxes, and we consider them. <laughs> so, anyway so i i do see what your point is logan when you got like five people three on one side two on the other hold on to a car it just no. seems like everybody wants to feel important and have something to do like if i got my hand on the car i'm part of the cool crowd like i want to do a scientific uh, experiment i want to put someone on the quarter panel of a car in a, a water box one person not two just one person that I, re I regularly see one dude on the side of the car and I want to do a John Force burnout, and I want to physically see how far they can move the car one direction. And I want to, as hard as you can, I want you to push the car as hard as you can, see how far you can scoot it over by yourself. Because my question is, if you're on the left side of the car, and you're trying to hold it straight, and the car kicks right really hard, what do you do? You're going to grab under the quarter panel and pull it towards you? Yeah. I, that, have you seen the picture of the dude that was holding under the car, and he has his fingers up underneath the wheel well? Yeah, on the street. <laughs> yeah, like, that's a really good way to lose your fingers. Dude, I have a friend um, who had his finger stuck in the spokes of a brand new vet, and the dude driving the vet didn't know, and he drove away and ripped his finger off. Ugh. And he is a uh, former, he's a veteran, military veteran. He has he is a, a sniper, I believe, in the in the military. So he lost one of his, I think he lost his trigger finger doing that. Ooh. Craziness. Dude's he doesn't care though. He's literally every time I see him, he's got a cast or a, he's stitched up or something. He just gets up, dude. You can't keep him down. But yeah, I want to see physically how much you can move a car, just one person. I would and I'll you could put that thing 90. I'll just keep it floored and go straight into the wall. I don't care. <laughs> There's a Ricky Porter on the, in the comment section saying he was gonna do it for us next time at Kentucky Dragway. He'll he'll put that to the test. Ricky. I met Ricky at uh, Kentucky Dragway. He came out to the truck. Super, super nice dude. All those guys are awesome at KY Dragway. I am talking to the owner of Kentucky Dragway, and I apologize, uh, Aaron, um, if uh, you're watching this. I did not text you back today, but in the beginning stages of possibly putting together 
a clapped out event at Kentucky yeah. Dragway. Oh. So this is the first I've mentioned it publicly, but we are in the very, very, very infant stages of, of maybe putting something together. Um, and Kentucky Dragway was an easy choice for me because it's not in North Carolina and it's not in Michigan. So, and I know Josh isn't going to come down. So you got to come to me, Rye. Sorry about that, bud. All right, I'll, I'll deal with it. Josh, will you come down? Maybe. Ooh, dang. Heath Wait. says yes. If Heath's coming, then Josh is going to go. Heath, Heath has got to go. Heath's Heath, done. Yeah, he's the announcer. Heath has to bring the Camaro. Yeah, every time I come up, we got another pile his, of shit coming to the line. His, his Camaro. We were thinking of leaving my Camaro home and bringing Heath's Camaro down to shift sector. You should. It looks cooler than yours. Huh? <laughs> you should. I, I think you should. No, nothing. Don't worry about it. When's the last time that thing's been on the street? Dude, 10 years? No, it was on the street just, just a week ago. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> in a trailer. Uh, what's the combination of that? What engine, what trans? T56, right? T56, small block. Sick. Nitrous? Nope. Let's spray the rods out of that thing. Bring it down. Let's go. Good. So, no prep race for Rye. Yep. Okay. I just got an email or a message from uh, the promoter. It says he may be able to squeeze me in. So, uh, Scott, I see you listening in the comments. Um, we might be going no prep racing in a couple weeks. Scott's like, <clears throat> all right. <laughs> He's like, all right, fuck it, let's do it. Because there was one here local, and I'm like, man, I could have gone rounds and small tire and probably won the street class, but – you never know until you try. So, and uh, I have, I went and got uh, another pair of my wheels bead locked at Mac, Mac Fab. Shout out to Mac Fab. Those guys are awesome. So I have two sets of rear rear wheels. No small toast. And uh, we're gonna get a set of slicks mounted on them and just throw our hat in the ring and see what's up. It's exciting. I'm excited for you, my friend. Are you gonna rock a radial or a slick? Slick. We're doing no prep. It's got to be a slick. I'm going to try a set of Hoosiers. Never tried them. Who was it that came out and just said, you? everyone told me I needed a, a slick for no prep, and they had a radial on it. There was a post, and um, I can't remember if they posted data, but it was – I know um, Randy Westmoreland from Leash Electronics, he's done no prep on a radial and done pretty damn good with it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I still – I think most people would agree that a slick is a little bit more forgiving than a radial in any track surface out there. I just hate the way a slick feels on the big end. Ah, oh, man, it's so much fun. It's terrifying. I like it. Does it like wobble back and forth? Oh yeah, it's it's rowdy. You feel like you're taking the long way down the track. Like it gets it gets sporty. <laughs> do it with this. When you do it with a stick shift, it's even it's even more fun. Every time you unload the chassis to grab a gear, like oh, I can do. Dude, I, I, when I when I switched because I ran slicks on my car for the first couple of years when I moved out here and actually started going to the track more consistently and and when it's switching to a radial and I was like man if the car's gone faster on a radial and Scott from Drag Week has told me multiple times that they put it on a radial put it on a radial but where we were racing the car would go down the track every single time on a slick and the car was like I would line it up a little bit crooked because I know it was gonna like curve off the launch and and it was with a slick it was just i don't know man it was more fun a little bit more excitement in there a slick is like someone kicking you in your back off a cliff and then a radial was like someone just pushing you on a swing set just kind of drama free and just like oh here's the acceleration with a slick it's it's a little bit sporty tetros william tetro joined he said it's just a little wiggle yeah 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 <laughs> shut up <laughs> shut up um <laughs> Tetro is actually a very big inspiration to my RX-7. He has a, a wicked FD that's actually going to the body shop right now to get repainted. He had a little scuff with the wall, and um, and it's getting back together now. But, uh, yeah, I, my car on a slick on the big end was terrifying. I, I am not shy about talking about what a giant Frady cat I am racing. And I'll tell you that the one eight-second pass with the stick shift I have under my belt was enough for me to be like, all right, that's enough of that. I'm done with that. I'm, I'm not built for this. Like the grub worm going. Oh, I can't even, imagine. Even Joel Granis going sixes with an H pattern six cylinder. That's insane to me. If you're not privy to that, Joel Granis went six something high sixes with an H pattern T56 synchro trans. Like 690, and, I think. 
in a 2JZ powered Supra carbon fiber, everything. I mean, it's a, that car is a pro, I don't want to call it a pro mod, but it's a damn pro mod. Yeah. Might as well be. It's a, it's that car's wild, man. But yeah, six is with an H pattern. That's nuts. So what else are we going to talk about? We're only 20 minutes into this. It's going well. Um, I feel I like it's going believe, great. I can, <laughs> you guys can help me bleed brakes over there. Yeah. You just go work on your car and we'll just talk. Yeah, just keep it going. You guys just work in the background. We'll, we'll, we'll narrate and give people the play by play while you guys go work. We could. Let's go to the comment sections. Let's ask personal in-depth questions about our lives. Everybody yeah. that's watching right now, go ahead and submit your most personal of questions and we will be forced to answer them in front of God and everybody. Ask, ask Logan anything. Nothing is off limits. There's literally nothing I will not answer. Let's... Well, I shouldn't say that. There's probably like one to 17 things I shouldn't legally answer. <laughs> Who does a better kickflip, Josh or Rob Deerdick? Deer, Deer Dick. Who's Josh? Oh, I got one for you. Did you guys see Joe Biden stole a Lila video and uses it for his ad campaign? Are you ready to talk about this? On YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Are you ready to talk about this, Josh? I mean, I'll keep all politics out of it because we always got to keep the politics out of it. Perfect. I'm mean, gonna... It could be any politician, but Joe Biden is using my daughter sliding her Corvette to try to get money for his campaign. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna wind it back a bit for everybody because this is a this was a topic that blindsided us. And Josh, when you hit me up about it, it did floor me. Rye, you saw it as well. Yep. So Josh hits me up and he says, Logan, I'm gonna send you something on Messenger, don't you take a look at it? <laughs> and usually if he hits me up like that, I mean you've never hit me up like that out of the blue for something like that. So I go to Messenger and I open it up, and sure enough, it is a paid Joe Biden endorsed from the official Joe Biden. Facebook page and the intro to this advertisement is a video of Josh's daughter Lila drifting her power wheels Corvette for people that do not know Josh's daughter is way more famous than Josh so <laughs> Josh, Josh may skateboard cool no one cares his daughter has a had a sick ass set of videos and honestly she's like a phenom she can wheel a go-kart or a, uh, whatever what do you want to not a go-kart i wouldn't call it a go-kart what do you call power it wheels. it's power no, wheels. no no no. i'm talking about at the, like, at the, you're the, talking about the they're like electric shifter cars basically yeah these little shifter cars do anyway lila went viral for a while and the video is still viral if you type in gif in your gift search and you look for drift corvette the first thing that always shows up is a little girl in a, a corvette power wheels drifting giving thumbs up or hand signals and grabbing the, like there's a bunch of versions of this, but there's one that's uber famous that gets shared all the time. And Joe Biden decided to steal that and use it for the intro of a paid advertisement for his freaking campaign. Yeah. That's no, the, I didn't no, think. No permission asked, like, no, just like, that's mine. So now clapped out is sending a cease and desist. <laughs> Hey, not only that, I was like, gonna, I was watching this skate video on YouTube. It was like a Thrasher magazine link. So I clicked on it, brought me to YouTube, and the pre roll was the Lila video. And oh like, my God. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's everywhere. It popped up on one of mine too. And I'm like, oh, this is what he's talking about. Because I just saw the screen grab that you sent, and it popped mm -hmm. up on mine. I was like, oof. And it's the first thing in that video. The first no, it's clip. The whole, it's, the, it's the entire video. At yeah. the end, it shows him like handshaking with somebody. And I'm like, you motherfucker. Yeah. I don't care if it was Biden or Trump. It's like, you motherfucker, dude. But Biden does like seem to be smelling little kids. Like, I'm a little nervous about it because isn't he like. <laughs> this dude said, I'm keeping politics out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's not going to go out of that politics. and that shit. I mean, I see videos and I'm like, look, I don't know. They're all creepy. Fuck all those dudes and yeah, I don't know. Oh uh, yeah. That's so lawyers, that? lawyers, lawyers, yeah. have talking, lawyers yeah. have been talking about it a little bit. Um, Pert Plus, you got Pert Plus. That's good. It's good. I like that conditioner. I don't know, I don't know what's gonna happen with it, but we'll so see. that was a uh, so that was a pretty shell shocking situation for us. Well, yeah. first the gap comes at us. Yeah. Right. Now Joe Biden comes at us, bro. We have finally we've made it. We made it. Are you talking about Joe Biden coming at us, bro? <laughs> Let me lay down real quick, bro. Are you talking about Joe Biden coming at us? Why don't you square up, Biden? 
don't please don't come to my house federal agents i don't want to deal with that i'm just kidding it's really josh's fault he lives in michigan i'll give you his address <laughs> so yeah that was a shell shocker and that was something i didn't i didn't know whether or not josh was wanting to talk about that publicly but it took every ounce of my soul not to immediately post that up because i'm a social media whore and be like can't believe Mr. Biden decided. I don't know why that's the voice I use. <laughs> yeah, why is it, when he's like <laughs> Fat Albert. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> I mean, I wonder how much he. I wonder how much. Like, if if they were gonna license the video for real, like, what do you charge a presidential fucking candidate that used to be the vice president? You know, <laughs> and, and, and when you click on the link, like when you type in the whatever the link they got with it, it's literally the donation page. So they're yeah. like, they're bringing in money off it. And it's, Just tell them um, you'll take 2% of whatever the donations are. Well, I got uh, a friend of mine is a partner in, in a big agency and she's, uh, she's going to handle it. Good. So, I yeah. say that that would, that's the best way to handle it. And, and honestly, I, uh, I hope you make enough money where you can buy us out of your contractor clapped out, which is currently, what is it now? What is the OS Rye? 10.6 million. Yeah, I can't remember Roughly. the number, but you didn't read the fine print when you signed up for this, bud. We should. Oh, what the hell? What? You guys there? Yeah, we're here, bud. We're uh, we're doing just man. fine. My power, my whole power, my whole garage just fluctuated. Fluctuated? Yeah. <laughs> fluctuated? You said what up? Like everything um, just like shut down for a second there. Yeah. Hey, let me Rick, give you it a point. Hey, hold Here's, on. Let me give a shout out to um, Greg real quick, who just popped on. If, if y'all haven't seen his cars, Greg. Got a Greg. Car how do you? What's his? How do you say his last name? Sear. Yeah, I think Sear. Yeah. Oh man, that's way nicer than yours. Yeah, you should see this Nova that he's building. Who built that uh, chassis for the Nova? I don't know. Same. I think it might have been the same place that built like Jimbo's or something like that. Damn, that is sick. Man. Yeah, that does look good. Well, uh, the picture I'm looking at is from 2018, but. Yeah. yeah, his whole little, his whole squad is tight. He's got some fast shit, that's for sure. Yeah, Greg, I'm gonna go ahead and hit you with the old friend request, right quick. Just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and pop and accept that because uh, you're part of the crew now, there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the club. There's so many people that know Josh that hate me because of how loud I am, and I really appreciate that. It feels. There's good. a lot of people that don't know me that hate you. Yeah, that's fair. That's 100 <laughs> percent fair. Oh my God, Rye, please yes. tell everybody what you discovered on YouTube today. Oh, <laughs> the, dude, so. Oh, yeah, race car specialties, that's what it is. Yeah. We always check, like, on the phone. Like, we upload a video on YouTube, and then we just, like, read the comments on our phone or something like that. Like, rarely do we do any sort of management on computer. So today, I'm uploading, like, the older episodes of the podcast, and I see, I don't know what they called it, like, YouTube will catch and hold comments that they deem possibly inappropriate for you to go through and approve and there was a grip of them in there and some of them were borderline inappropriate but i got called a millennial fuck multiple times by this dude who is big mad that oh, what? I, you yeah up. you you're broke you, you yeah hey your phone your everything broke up we didn't hear any of that fuck um so yeah youtube comments deemed inappropriate potentially and i got called a millennial fuck multiple times <laughs> for ruining a 2003 Cobra. A guy said, if I had enough money, I would buy every 03 Cobra in the world so you can't get your hands on it. Like some of the most ignorant, hateful shit in there. I love it. I love so much that you got called a millennial fuck. <laughs> I kind of agree. Yeah, I do. Was, well, yeah. you're what? What are you, what are you, a baby boomer, Josh? What do you call your generation? Um, gen, gen, aren't we maybe Gen X or something like that? Don't look at Heath. He's a millennial too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> He's a yes, you are, buddy. Me, I'm the only adult one here. I'm a, I don't know what the hell I am. I am a millennial. I was born. I don't want to give my age away because I'm super young. I'm only 24. I think the last, I think I'm the last of the hardworking generations, right? That's what they say. I don't, I can't respond to that. I don't want to respond to that. I can't do it. I'm just gonna let that one slide. Yeah, I can't do it. He, this man just spent four and a half weeks at his lake house cabin on the water, drinking margaritas and shooting fireworks off. Water skiing and shit. Yeah. He, I call him. He doesn't answer. And this asshole calls me back. He's like, hey, what's up? No, no, no. I'm just, uh, 
just driving my boat around at the moment. Oh no, no, I answered. <laughs> no, you called. Didn't you? No, you called me back. No, no, I answered. No, you specifically called me back when you're putting around just to show off your brand new boat. No, I didn't even mention my boat. You said, "What are you doing right now?" I said, "I'm on my boat," and you were like, "Bullshit!" And I said, eh. "Yeah, hard he, flex." He oh, oh and I said, "Just call me back on a Facetime." He flexed. He flexed me so hard, bro. Yep. Scout. So. We got a lot to talk about still. There's a lot of very important topics I want to cover in the next how many minutes we got left? Um, 24 minutes. You want to roll through some questions? Here's yeah, one. let's question it out. What's one car that you miss the most that you sold? I mean, Logan, okay. you've sold a million of them. So which one do you miss? <sighs> this is sad, man. I don't know if I ever touched base after I was looking for my first car. We talked about that in a podcast. We haven't. So this sucks. This sucks so so hard for me um everyone asks that question you know what is the number one car you would buy or what was the number one car you could have back and everybody has their answer josh i know you would love a twin turbo fully built ford gt you've talked about this at length rye some sort of peugeot i'm sure i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and for me my dream car and the car i've always wanted back or in general was my first car not because it's cool but because it was my first car it was a 98 honda civic that my dad bought for me and I had a ton of sentimental attachment to it. And I have been searching for this car since 2013. So since 2013, there's threads on Honda Tech where I'm searching for the car, finding the last owners. And I cannot find the car. I cannot find the car. Until recently, I cannot name names, but I had some help from a friend in law enforcement. And after doing some digging on my side and some digging on his side, he hits me up and he said, Logan, I got some news. I found the last registered owner of the car. Here is his uh, information, and um, if you tell anyone about this, I'll kill you. And I was like, okay, okay, cool. So the problem is the last time the car was registered was in 2011. I sold the car in 2009, which tells me either somebody turned it into a race car and it's in pristine condition, parked away under a cover, or it was immediately totaled. There's really no in-between if it hasn't been touched by a DMV since 2011. <clears throat> so miraculously, I got in touch with the last known owner of the car, shot him a text and I said, Hey man, looking for some info. It's been eight years, nine years since you've been on file with this car. This is the car, blah, blah, blah. And his response was, yeah, I sold it to a kid and it was totaled immediately. There was nothing salvageable on the car. Oof. And man, dude, I know it's a civic and I know it's just a Honda and everyone can feel that whatever they want to feel about Hondas. But I'm telling you, man, it felt like a family member passed away. Not that serious, closing. but it, it, yeah, I will say that's a great point. After seven years of looking, I finally had a period at the end of that sentence, but it just was tough, man. It was really, really tough. So um, that's that question. What's the dream car? That would have been it. And I can never have that car again. And I will never own another Honda and or Acura Integra Type R um, as a result of that. I'll never own another Honda ever, ever, ever ever again it's too emotional man yeah i don't get attached to that shit done uh, there's not there's not a car i own that i would be like really wanting back i just i just don't none just not even one not one no. not what, about a single... your, what about your first what about your civic that you bought with your first skate money that shit was terrible i had a 19 <laughs> percent <laughs> <rate. laughs> i love the picture <laughs> left it in chicago and told him to come pick it up that shit was I, terrible. <laughs> and I had I had bad credit for a long time, and and when I went to finally pay it off, years and years later, they didn't even want the money. They just told me to have fun with the shitty credit, and I had to get a lawyer, and the lawyer had to make them accept to pay to get it off off my credit report. I love like the that. picture of you with the uh, um. What, what wheels were those? Those tri bars. Yeah, the tri spoke tri spokes. Wheels. Yeah. Yeah, they were like uh, generic Anteras. Yeah. Yeah, you missed the car. You know the exact wheel. You miss it. <laughs> no, I, you miss it. Mm -mm. I just know. I just liked how I got the wheels. I like traded skateboards and stuff I got for free to <clears> get <throat> the wheels, and and I got wheels. It had the same disc man and, and tape deck adapter that you had in your Lambo. Oh my God, your Lamborghini <laughs> had the that stereo looked like it was straight out of the back end of Goodwill, no. sitting in a bucket for like seven years. That Wait, was the car. No, your black. So. <laughs> A few years ago, when we were both still in Cali. Yeah, what car, though? The black Lambo, the black Gallardo. Oh, did you ever own one of those? 
Then, I knew it. Shut <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, okay. Just fucking clown. Hey, what are you, so are you talking good. about the blue twin Which one are you talking about? <laughs> Which Lamborghini of the ones I've owned? So we're next at, week we're, on Clapped Out. We have Tony Hawk. Fuck yeah. Josh Kalis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're hey, at Josh's hey, how many, house. How many Tony Hawk pro skaters were you in, Josh? That's what I thought. Same here. Neither was I. So. Yeah. No, we're at Josh's house putting – what are we doing? We're switching the – changing the head gaskets on the Camaro before shift sector. And we needed something to wire in the, the two-step button on the shifter or the, the boost control button on the shifter. And we roll to the parts store, and you're like, oh, we'll jump in the Lambo. I'm like, all right, cool. Never owned a Lambo before. And we're riding. We get in the thing, and he hooks his phone up to the aux cord. Oh and then God. I realized where the aux cord is going – it's going into the tape deck because this dude's got this is <laughs> driving a Lamborghini Gallardo, but it has the tape deck adapter for an aux cord still in the thing. And we're rolling like I don't know what it was playing, it's like Rolling Stones or something like that. And the tape deck was jacked up and it kept switching from side A to side B. So it's like, I can't get no is faction. <laughs> <laughs> that was a remix. Oh man, it was oh. It was God, just so dude. funny how, like, no matter how much Josh gets, he's so, still just so keeps, ghetto. Yeah, can't can't still keep the street. I appreciate yeah. that level of commitment. Man, I was standing I on still, the. Sh- I still rock tape tape decks. I mean, <laughs> God, what a great that's perfect placement. Yeah. Um, I was standing with Mr. Josh Kalis downtown Grand Rapids, and I'm not I'm not feeding your ego on this, Josh. You probably don't even remember this, but this was hilarious to me. And we were sta- we had just where do we we ate dinner at that one joint. Uh, it was really good. I don't know. It was not Brazilian food. It was uh, I don't, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, Sanchez. Yeah. Spanish joint. And we were walking down the street. We stop. We're just talking, and he's having a cigarette. And some homeless guy walks up, and he just stands next to us, and he's just like staring at us, like, "Hey." And I like look at Josh. And Josh looks at me, and Josh is like, "What, bro? Like, what? What do you need, man? I'm trying to have a conversation here, bro." Like, I don't know what he said to the guy, but he just immediately went straight street. And the guy was like, hi, my bad, my bad. Go on with yourself. And I looked at Josh and I'm like, man, you are, like anyone else would have just sat, stood there and had a conversation. But you've even made me feel awkward there. I thought yeah, you were going to fight the guy. We, nah, I don't, we were in the, me and you were in the middle of a conversation. So yeah. you just don't butt in a conversation. <laughs> it was, it was hilarious. I've seen both sides of that from Josh where it's like, either like, yo, step off and get the hell away from me or he'll just pick up and have a conversation with that person. Yeah. Like yeah. just the most, he was like, Oh, this guy looks like he's got a story to tell. Let me start talking to him. And there's people I'm like, hey, what are you doing? They're like, I don't know. He like seemed at, interesting at the time. At PRI specifically. Well, Josh sounds like a pretty normal fucking person. Sometimes you don't want to talk to somebody. And sometimes <laughs> <laughs> Seems pretty normal to me. Don't paint yourself as normal. That doesn't go with our whole motif here, buddy. You yeah. have got to be the guy. So that's yeah. you. That's your role. You're accepted. Um, don't let anybody sell you short. Uh, who thinks PRI is going to be canceled this year? I mean, I do. It's in December. It's after November. Not saying anything. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I know SEMA's having a hard time, but I, uh, I'm excited if PRI for PRI this year. World Cup Finals, so long as that still goes on, I will be at World Cup Finals, Hall Tech World Cup Finals. If you guys have not been to that race – I highly recommend it. Um, it is an awesome, awesome race with a ton of fast cars, and it's a great time. They put on a great show out there in Maryland. I have not been once to that. I feel like I, I need to. I keep getting invited year after year. Damn, Mr. Popular. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody wants a piece of rye. Everybody. There's a lot more of me to go around than there was last year, I'll tell you that much. No, there's not. Take your hat off. I mean, my second. Are we doing this again? It's good gleams, man. Oh my god! Josh is uh, here. Let's move over here. Yeah, you look great. That's a good look, dude. Thanks. I like it. I'm not carrying the team anymore. Someone else come up with a topic to talk about, please. The PRI is well, going to have. I had to mask up because heat's over here coughing and shit and freaking me out. <laughs> That's I don't it. think Heath is fine. Trust me. You want whatever antibodies he's got in his body. One hundred percent. Yeah, it's true. I could. I couldn't go through it. Heath went through and come out on the other side. They took half his brain out. If you're wondering at home, literally, yeah. they took Guy half. Worked, 
try working next to him all the time. I keep thinking his fucking head's gonna blow up. He's like <laughs> pulling on the he's like pulling on the wrench, trying to like loosen something, and I'm just like, oh shit. <laughs> you know? um, like that emoji. Yeah. So yeah. Heath went uh he went to Uganda on a church trip and he went swimming in one of the rivers there and a uh, parasite amoeba crawled into his pee hole yeah. went up his whole body and fed straight on his brain stem when they tell and, you don't urinate in the river they mean it yeah and the thing is Heath's got a lot of surface area for a bug to enter I'm not going to say any more than that but he is <laughs> the man's <laughs> equipped man right <laughs> Have tremendous you, urethra also side note crazy fact about Heath he actually owns the rights to lemon party com <laughs> and do not, don't, do not go to that website at all or meat spin don't go to meatspin.com either you um, but either in me right round baby right round like um, I, I put a towel in my car every time we drive around make just in case in case what the parasite doesn't climb out his wiener oh his head explodes no no he's fine he literally removed it from his own brain stem himself he is rambo he is new age rambo but you should want to if he coughs you should breathe in because whatever he's got in his immune system you need <laughs> <laughs> you see he is the man. All right, your turn, Ryan. You say something funny, so let's go. Let's go. Oh, uh, man. I'm digging through comments here right now. Hey, what's that other Mustang next to that Mustang? Uh, the owner actually wishes to remain nameless, but it is a LS swap turbo. I'm doing some wiring on it. Holly Dominator, typical Power Glide, 4.8 Garrett turbo. Is it faster than yours? No. Not by a shot. Not a chance. I hope he sees that and pulls out of his hole. He knows the damn deal. It'll be fired up here actually very shortly. Um, but he's going to run some local grudge stuff. But he actually explicitly said, please do not mention my name. Or he's like, don't worry about covering the car up, but please don't do any videos on the thing. Like, yeah, gotcha. Not a problem. Yeah, don't blame him. <laughs> yeah, nice try. He almost got you. He almost got me. No, but like this is the car that finally sealed the deal for me. I am so over doing backbreaking labor for anybody else and pretty much sticking strictly to just doing wiring at this point. It's just so much easier. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'm gonna I have an opinion on that. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. What's your opinion? That I'm not um, good at wiring? Um, Are you gonna no. do a full wiring the you know, the whole deal type deal? What do you mean the whole deal type deal? Like, I mean, someone brings you a car and the whole thing needs to be wired or are you yeah, yeah, yeah. About it takes a couple of wires. No, no. Like this car had zero wires on it. It literally had just the, like the pigtails on the back of the headlights and taillights. That was it. So wired in the whole. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, what's his name? Yeah. Yeah. That guy uh, had the whole engine harness, taillight harness, chassis harness, everything. So um, yeah, that's basically it. It's oh, that's in here for a wiring job. There's not a lot to talk about when he doesn't want to talk about it. So I don't know what else you How want. How far to along are you? Uh, it should be fired up here in the next couple of days if I wasn't going to the lake this weekend. Hmm. Oh, you'll break my balls about being at the lake, but not. I really. didn't break your balls. Logan did. Yeah, that was me. Oh, that I was the I was the ball breaker. I was the one talking shit. So the yeah. other guy. Me, baby. Scott, me. Scott. Scott Sublet wants to know when Claptop's going to build a company car. I'd answer that question if he spelled our name right, but he didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, S Scott from Drag Week wants to know when we're gonna build a company car. Oh, what oh we, damn! We have company funds for starters. Yeah, what do we have? Like four hundred dollars left? No, we're doing a little bit better than that. We're very public about our finances. I I realize that now. We we're are no very public about our finances. We, we are. Don't have any money. We're all broke. We are thousandaires right now, collectively, not individually. Yeah, no. Josh is really bringing our total value down. Wait, like thousand zares or a thousand zares? Thousand single. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't, sorry to get your hopes up, buddy. We have as much as you spend on cigarettes in one week in our bank account right now. Oh, that's cool. We can support you for a whole seven days. <laughs> we, <laughs> I still haven't got any stickers yet. I'm going to shift sector with no clapped out stickers on the car. Yeah, yeah but I'm coming, to sh yeah, I'm coming to shift sector. There you go. Hey, um, Rye, don't, don't tell Josh, but I'm probably going to bail on shift sector. I'm probably not going to go. Nobody would be a surprise. Yeah, I don't care. It's like an hour and a half north and east of where I'm meeting my friend for coffee on Saturday. That's called foreskinning. Foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> for coffee. 
Um, yes, this weekend, Shift Sector and a couple other things are happening. Josh is going to be racing. Heath is going to be racing Josh's car. I will be having coffee in Indiana. Rye will be at the lake. Are you going to do any videos this weekend, Rye, for Clapped Out? I have a video that's going up tomorrow. I already did uh, it today. As well as... The video I filmed. I told you a million times. I, I apologize. I said, I forgot. Resend it. And you have not resent it. So resend it. I was, dude, I was pretty much a pretty... I was a prick in that video, like... I might have to edit a bunch of No, videos. it's that's what we, that's mm -hmm. perfect, dude. Don't edit yeah, a video. Dude, just be that. just you gotta be who you are on camera. I was really yeah. kind of an asshole and I watched it and I was like, No, first, don't. Was like, if you change anything, then we're we're gonna disagree. You're done. It, yeah. Here's the thing. If you change now, Josh, then I'll have to explain to my dad where the dickhead on the live feed went. And I don't want to have to do that. Oh you know I mean? uh I found I, something we can talk about. Did you guys hear about uh Richie Crampton? You guys hear about the shitbox of doom? That nomad wagon with the blower, basically like it's a water jacketed fucking top fuel motor. Built it for drag week. No, nothing, nobody. I don't know. I know I okay. read about the accident, but I do not know him in as a person. I do not know them, but I've read about the accident. It's very unfortunate, you, man. You know the car, right? The yeah, shitbox, it, shitbox it, of doom. So that happened this uh this past week so guys who don't know uh richie crampton um top fuel is he top fuel or funny car i think he's a top fuel driver uh they built this gnarly drag week 57 chevy i think it's a nomad could be wagon i don't know the difference between a nomad just a 57 chevy wagon with essentially a top fuel motor that without the nitro and water jacketed and um this past week uh they were out, Richie Crampton and a couple other guys, Dom Lagana is another uh, NHRA pro driver, was allegedly driving it, and they just say in the news article, speed was a factor, and the car was a pretty much completely total loss, and Dom Lagana is not in good shape. The other two that were in there, Richie Crampton, Jake Sanders, uh, not sure who Jake Sanders is off the top of my head, um, they sustained injuries, but they're non-life-threatening, but... Um, Richie Crampton was life threatening. No, I thought. Dom Lagana, the driver, was life. The guy who was driving it was Dom, not. Yeah. He was the one who had life threatening, serious injuries. Uh, Richie Crampton and Jake Sanders uh, seemed like they're going to make a full recovery, but Lagana is one who who got the worst of it. I'm reading this. Uh, I'm surmising this off a of bang shift right now, but the, the article is out there all over the place. Um, but those guys, man, we've all done dumb shit on the street uh, at one point or another, and I still from time to time continue to do so but it can when it goes sideways it'll go sideways really really quick like it, it sucks uh scott says jake sanders is the crew chief for dom lagana so those are some pretty heavy hitters in a top tier level of NHRA racing that it can happen to anybody like these are guys who are used to wheeling cars that make i mean estimated 10,000 horsepower run 300 miles an hour and a quarter mile and they're out on the street in a car that makes half that and it didn't didn't go well for them so uh thoughts and prayers go out to those guys man I hate to see that happen to anybody uh it doesn't matter how famous or infamous you are that's be careful out there we talked about safety more than a, a handful of times on this show and uh take it serious it can happen anytime anyplace um there i've been looking while you've been talking for updates on dom and how he's doing and i cannot find any i can't any find find any hard evidence or update on how his his medical condition is right now i will say that there's a post and i'm not i don't know this gentleman his name is scott palmer he posted a day ago saying dom is in a fight for his life right now help him fight with everything you have he needs to be here with us if you don't know dom you should it would make everyone a better person um, prayers family so that's I, if anybody that's watching this live feed has an update on his condition, that would be awesome. Um, it, it, that stuff is super, super, super sad. I hate to, I hate to see that, man. Yeah, I, I just, don't... I just posted up the picture of the car. It, it's, yeah, thoughts and prayers to all those guys, man. It's nobody wants to see that, like you said, and hopefully uh, everybody makes a full recovery from that here very, very soon. 
I agree. I do agree, man. Young too. He was 34 years, not was, he's 34 years old from Scarsdale, Scarsdale, New York, right? I think. Uh, yeah, I believe so. So hopefully um, he pulls through and kicks some ass, man. I, I know that's a, a very rough position to be in. Um, sad, man. But All right, we're going to do breaks. You All right. We'll do your outros in a few minutes. We got to get this. Bye. Done. Later. Peace, guys. Later. All right. Yo, uh, Ricky Porter, during our podcast, posted LMFAO in the comment section and Facebook banned him for that. What? Yeah. Your community, your comment didn't follow our community standards for harassment and bullying, and they banned him. He just sent me a message. They banned him from face posting on Facebook. Dude, what is with the algorithm? Like, I don't know. Let's not say anything too bad. I don't want to get. <laughs> That goes back to the YouTube thing too. Like they were like banning some of the dumbest comments on there for like catching or, or screening or whatever, fielding them. Dude, this is crazy. But yeah, either way, I don't know. I don't even want to begin to understand the Facebook's back end and what's going on there or how they're dissecting our podcasts for whatever reason. Oh, I know you've been doing enough of the tinfoil hat deep dives here lately. There is no, there, it's not a conspiracy if there's enough factual evidence to back up everything that's going on. It's all I'm about that. So I'm, I don't know what pill I need to take. I don't remember the colors, but yeah, we just need to open our eyes. Is all we need to do as a country. So I will leave that alone because that's a whole different podcast. And I want to keep my head in the sand because it's comfortable and safe here. It is. And the people in power would never do anything to hurt me. That's you right now, buddy. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. I'm in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> You're so woke, bro. I'm so woke, dude. I'm I'm like very like <laughs> on a scale of one to bright eyed and bushy tailed, bro. I'm like a little cricket bouncing around in the grass in the morning. Uh, you are like three cups of coffee at seven a.m. Woke. I'm right three now. cups of espresso on a freight train to hell. <laughs> what? Jesus. All right, um, that's all we got for this show. We have three minutes till it's an hour. I don't. You know, we're just at the point now where for yep. rambling clapped out podcast we appreciate everybody tuning in if you haven't catch this thing live you can find it on itunes and podbean we will be getting it put up on google play as well in the very near future head over to clappedout.com slash store grab yourself some merch there's still a little bit of discounted items up there and we will be refreshing the store very soon i am currently working on hats we are going to come out with the two honks his ass shirts very soon as well as some other designs so pay attention to the facebook page that's where you will find any new merchandise updates coming as soon as we got them logan any parting words i've been beatboxing the whole time is it good can you tell i was beatboxing <laughs> i was doing a 